good afternoon, everybody. My name is Khalid Jashan. I'm the executive director of the Arab Center of Washington. We're delighted that uh, you joined us, uh, chose to join us uh, today to uh, participate in this uh, briefing on the battle for Mosul, political implication uh, for the region and for the next administration and other stakeholders in the region. We will try to cover uh, as many of these as, as uh, possible. Uh, as you all well know, uh, the, the long-awaited and, and discussed uh, campaign to uh, resume control uh, of or reclaim control of the northern Iraqi city of uh, Mosul, uh, where the Islamic State uh, has been kind of in control of the city for a while, uh, was launched on uh, 17 uh, October. Uh, so after several weeks, uh, we keep hearing uh, on the news uh, contradictory reports as to who's where exactly and who's uh, occupying what village, but there seems to be a general trend uh, emerging. I think the uh, Iraqi forces and uh, other militias uh, fighting with them seem to be pushing uh, uh, the Islamic State forces out of uh, Daesh forces out of certain uh, parts uh, of, uh, of the city. So the operation uh, which is expected to last uh, for a long time. Some experts say at least a month. Some people say probably a lot longer uh, than that, as m most of you uh, already uh, know. Uh, but in the uh, first uh, few weeks at least, uh, Iraqi forces, as I uh, mentioned, have advanced somewhat rapidly uh, from both uh, sides of the city, the east, and, and definitely also from the southeast uh, part of uh, Mosul. Uh, seizing different uh, towns uh, and villages, uh, despite the fact that there is, of course, uh, already, uh, as we have seen, uh, some continuing uh, resistance uh, to, to their uh, advances. Um, there are a lot of controversial uh, questions that have been asked, asked with regards to the uh, campaign, the military campaign in, in Mosul. I would like to just mention maybe five or six of these questions that will say, serve as parameter uh, for our briefers uh, today. And then I will introduce our speaker and the two commentators uh, who are commenting on the uh, briefing. And, and I hope uh, that they will try to focus on answering uh, some of uh, these questions. The first question I would like to ask is, why is the battle over Mosul? a make or break battle for Iraq. What is the significance of, of this city uh, for the survival of the Iraqi government, uh, particularly in light of the current uh, political circumstances uh, in uh, the country? Two, what's the, you know, the people keep describing media and analysts and what have you keep referring to the battle uh, in, in Mosul or over Mosul as being very complex. What is the source of this complexity? Uh, in Mosul? What makes it uh, complex? Third, why is Mosul an existential fight, or is it an existential fight indeed for Daesh or IS? Um, will uh, the battle uh, over Mosul extend across the border into Syria, extend to Raqqa, or is this uh, daydreaming on the part of, uh, of uh, some uh, analysts? What are the implications of that for Iraq? What are the implications for Syria? Uh, what are the implications for all stakeholders uh, in, in the uh, region? And of course, a very important question for us as, as a small think tank focused on democracy and human rights uh, in the region, a question that's very important to us uh, and very central to our agenda is the, the fate and the interests of the people. Uh, you know, we talk about uh, Mosul as if it's empty, uh, yet we have uh, noticed uh, during the, uh, at least the media coverage over the past few weeks, the fact that tens of thousands, we don't know exact number yet, but tens of thousands, and those of you who are involved with the human rights or humanitarian organizations know the extent of the threat uh, that is facing uh, the population, the civilian population, uh, of the city and, and the region as a, as a whole. Uh, and particularly if this fight is going to continue for months and months, uh, what are the implications for the, the hundreds of thousands supposedly that will emerge according to experts over a longer uh, anticipated fight 
uh, around uh, the, the city in terms of both uh, ethnic, uh, religious, uh, humanitarian implications uh, across the board. And finally, I would say question number six that we would like to uh, cover today is what comes after? After the dust settles from this battle, you know, what, what do we expect? What do we expect for Iraq? What do we expect uh, for uh, the region? Uh, is, is this uh, a battle that is uh, going to prove to be decisive in this continuing a global fight against terror, uh, against particularly uh, ISIS or, or, or Daesh, or is it going to be uh, an isolated uh, event in a way? To help us uh, deal with these questions, uh, at least uh, explore them and raise some maybe more questions uh, about them, and hopefully during the Q&A that will follow this uh, session, we'll, we'll try to uh, pin down uh, our briefers on some of these uh, issues. Uh, we're delighted to have uh, three colleagues from uh, the center here with us uh, participating in this briefing. Uh, first, of course, is Dr. Abdel Wahab Al Qassab, who is Associate uh, Researcher at the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies, our sister organization in Doha, uh, Qatar, and he's also a visiting uh, scholar here, a visiting uh, researcher with us here uh, at the center. He, uh, his bio is included uh, in the program. You can see that uh, in there in terms of very rich experience. Uh, dealing with Gulf issues in general, Iraqi issues, military issues uh, in particular, but being a former uh, military man uh, himself and, and taught uh, military uh, science for a while. Uh, I think uh, he has a unique kind of perspective on what's going on uh, in and around uh, Mosul. We have asked uh, two of our colleagues here at the center who have done uh, recent papers actually, and we did include their papers actually in your folder. Uh, recent uh, uh, policy analysis uh, short papers uh, dealing with the same issue. Uh, Dr. Imad Harb, who is a non-resident analyst here at the Arab Center and as adjunct assistant professor, uh, Center for Contemporary Arab Studies at, at Georgetown, uh, and uh, who will be talking about U.S. implications. What are the implications of the battle over Mosul uh, for the United States, particularly in light of the changes that are taking place uh, in, in Washington? We have a president taking over. Uh, in a few weeks, who has accused uh, the U.S. government of doing nothing, uh, if you will, uh, and yet uh, there is a huge battle taking place uh, out there. What are the implications? What is he going to face? What type of challenge will he be facing as he takes over after uh, January uh, 20th? And our second uh, colleague, our commentator, would be Dr. Mustafa Gurbuz, who is also a non-resident analyst here at the center, and he's an adjunct pro uh, professorial lecturer at the Department of Sociology at American University with extensive uh, experience with uh, Turkish policies. And he will be specifically talking about that, the implications. We'll be talking about implications for the region, implications for the United States, implications also uh, for Turkey. So at this time, I would like to uh, uh, welcome uh, to the uh, podium Dr. Abdel Wahab al uh, to make his uh, presentation for about 20, 25 minutes. And then we'll proceed with two comments from our both commentators. And then uh, it will be your turn with a Q&A session for the balance of our time today. Thank you again for being here, Dr. al -Kassar. Thank you, Dr. Khalil, for your kind presentation, which I hope that I deserve. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind presence here. We are going to discuss a little bit complicated uh, topic. That's the situation in Iraq now, uh, within the you know ramifications of what 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 will be going out, what are the outcome uh, outcomes which we are expecting from the battle which is taking place now in Mosul. Uh, first of all, I mean I have to shed light uh, briefly in six five six minutes about. What is the real situation in Iraq? And why is Iraq is so unique in its effect upon the region that once it is strong, it is affected positively. Once it is weak, it is affected, uh, affected uh, negatively, which, which is this state of I mean, affairs which is taking place now. Um, Iraq is a pivot, uh, pivotal in the, in the region. I mean, it links the geostrategic circles of the region uh, since um, a long time, I mean, it is, it is linking the, the, 
the uh, Asian uh, theater with the Mediterranean. It is linking the Anatol Anatolian Turkey with the Gulf. It is linking uh, the same region with, with, with Russia through Cauc uh, Caucasus. So these things affected Iraq, brought it to the uh, you know, to being as a, a crossroad of the uh, world civilization, which were, you know, interaction or inter interactive in this uh, region. Now, Iraq is uh, multiple society. It consisted of many people from various, you know, origins. Majority of the Iraqis are Arabs. Arabs consisted about 80%. 78 to 80 percent of the situation. And Arabs here are divided into two major sectwise people, Sunnis and Shias. Sunnis and Shias in Iraq, in reality, are about the same because the same tribes are divided into, into these two categories. So you start with the tribe in Musul and around, you will find this tribe Sunni coming down up to about 70 kilometers south of Baghdad, it kept Sunni. After this 70 kilometer border, it, it entered the uh, south of Iraq, southern part of Iraq, and there you will find this the same. For exa example, the Shamaris, the first, the same tribe uh, became a Shiite. So Shiism, Sunnism are a mutual, uh, 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 you know, contribution uh, uh, toward the Iraqi uh, Arab uh, society. Uh, as I told you, the, uh, Arabs are about 80 percent. There is no, uh, uh, I mean, uh, statistics and data saying who are those people coming from, who are, who are Shias, who are Sunnis, uh, out of the uh, ah, this is Iraq, see, consisted of 18 governorates. You start from the north from the tip where Turkey is, and going down to about 70 kilometers south of Baghdad, all the tribes here are majority Sunnis. The same tribe, when you, when you, you know, cross this border about 50 to 70 kilometers, it became Shiitized because Shiism started to, to, to take place here right from the second half of the 19th century. And this is a matter of fact, there are Many, many writings about that. Uh, the second ethnicity in Iraq are the Kurds. The Kurds consisted of about 17.5% about uh, of the population. If we are talking about the Iraqi population of nowadays, which is about 32 million, uh, those people would be about, about uh, uh, four and a half to five million. From this four and a half and five millions, we have about 80% of them living in the three governorates, which is Duhok, Erbil, and Suleimaniye. Partially, they are living on the northeastern part of Kirkuk, and they are sharing Kirkuk with the other two ethnicities, the Arabs and Turkmans, Kirkuk the city. I mean. But Kirkuk as a governorate, the northeastern part of it is Kurd, the south, su southern part of it is Turkman, and the western part of it are Arabs. So this, this is the configuration of the ethnicities here. Uh, these, the Kurds are, as I told you, 17.5% of the population are divided into two major uh, linguistic-wise uh, uh, configuration. We, ha you ha we have Suleimania, half of Erbil, and the, the Kurdish part of Kirkuk, the Kurdish part this part of uh, Diala, this part. These are Soranis, and Sorani is the cultural dialect of Kurdish. The other part, who are the second half of Erbil and Duhok, are the Bahdinans, and the Bahdinans and the Soranis are uh, a bit, there are uh, many differences, even uh, uh, loyalty-wise, because the Bahdinans were all over the modern history of Iraq were loyal to the central government. So again, giving the pretense that all the Kurds choose to, uh, you know, uh, opted to go for arms against the government is uh, a little bit uh, uh, falsified. Uh, there are about, 
I mean, half and a half. On the eve of uh, the Kuwait affair, we have, I mean, government has about one and a quarter million Kurds were fighting with the government against the insurgency and against the Iranians during the Iraq-Iran war. This is the population as it is on 211. And you see that uh, uh, the governorates and the ethnicity, you see where Arabs, Arabs with traces of minorities, Arabs and Arabs, 90% Arab, 10% Kurds and Turkmen, this is Diyala, Kurds and Christians, and I will talk about the Christian uh, uh, component of the Iraqi society afterwards. And you have Kurds and Christians, and the Christians here, though it is a religion, but they are, you know, ident identify themselves as uh, religion, as Christian, but they are both either Chaldeans, who were identifying, identifying themselves as Arabs, before even they are wearing the Arab, you know, uh, uh, clothing, and the Assyrians who had been, you know, pushed to come to Iraq during the First World War after the Armenian, uh, uh, you know, prosecutions in Turkey and the atrocities in, in Oromia, Rizaia, and Iran. So these people came to Iraq uh, only on the uh, first, second decade of the 20th century. Uh, and you see other uh, Kurds, Arab, Turkmens, and uh, the rest. This is the configuration of the uh, 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 country. Uh, there is one p peculiar uh, fact I have to uh, bring out now. Uh, the Turkmens used to be in Iraq since about 1,000 years. You know, the Iraqis shared with the Turkmens or the people of Turkic uh, uh, origin right from the uh, Abbasid Caliphate time. And we have many of the tribes who had been in Iraq since then. Many of it had been Arabized, and many of it still, they are Turkmen. But uh, during the, the, the Ottoman Empire uh, 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 period, which um, you know, ruled Iraq, uh, uh, we had uh, a line which is starting from, from here and going this side. This line had been populated all the time by Turkmen uh, uh, tribes, and they are still up to now there. And because of this, Kirkuk has a Turkmen face. I mean, Kirkuk, Kirkuk's identity is mainly a Turkmen identity. The uh, other minorities are, you know, uh, living here and there. In this uh, map, you see uh, the, how the Iraqi tribes had been or are, uh, you know, disputed all over the Iraq, right from the Shamaris on the uh, north down to the uh, others. The southwestern plateau, this, the white one, is, you know, populated by Bedouin uh, tribes, the Anaza and the Lefer and the others, and they are Sunni tribes. Uh, the same about that uh, portion in the north, uh, northwest, where Shemaris, Ta'is, and Jeheshis, th those are also, uh, you know, uh, Bedouin tribes, which are up to now Sunnis. Uh, Iraq, as we see here, if we go to the power relation with it, and as I have said on the, on the beginning of my uh, uh, presentation, that Iraq is pivotal, and it uh, actually you know, uh, uh, has a very crucial uh, effect upon the region. Here we see that uh, there was a tri triad, a triangular power relation uh, as far as the Arab Gulf is concerned, which is, uh, uh, again, one of the main topics which are affecting Iraq and the region now. And this was, the triangle is Iraq, Iran, and the GCC. There is a matter of fact that any of the two of these when they come together, they can't contain the third. And I can bring you back to the uh, Iraq-Iranian war, when Iraq and the GCC were uh, together, Iran had been actually uh, contained. What happened now, what happened now, uh, is, you know, if we, if we uh, propose Iraq is A, Iran is B, uh, C, uh, GCC is C, you, you see how 
any of these powers are working against other and what what is the you know uh, uh, contradiction between uh, each power and the other and uh, uh, you see I, I have mentioned even the foreign presence of the US as a guarantor of uh, you know stability and peace for the GCC which is under question now I mean people are questioning this uh, validity of this after the invasion 203 the uh, you know the door was uh, opened to Iran to exercise its power within Iraq. It pushed uh, tens of thousands of its adherents from those people who had been you know forced either to leave Iraq during Saddam area or choose to go to Iran. They came in. They established the the Shiite uh, uh, political parties. The Shiite political parties paid allegiance first to the to the um, occupying power, the USA, but they, after that, afterwards, came to uh, adhere the Iranian presence in Iraq and actually supporting it. So what what we have now, only two powers are working in the on the on the uh, Gulf region instead of the Triad. Iraq had been confiscated to Iran. So we have now Iran on one part, which is affecting Iraq and the Gulf. And we have the GCC, which tried to contain the, the Iranian pro, uh, presence in Iraq and in, in Syria afterwards, and uh, even in Yemen, and uh, tried to, to uh, contain the Iranian expansion, uh, expansionism uh, toward the Arabian Gulf. So this, this is the state of affairs now. When the, 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 the Mosul uh, 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 when the Mosul uh, uh, affair came on, back on 2014. In, in, in Iraq, the reasons which, yeah, the reasons which paved the way to the presence of the terrorist organization on, on one hand, that's Al-Qaeda Iraq, and ISIS on one hand, and the Iranian-supported uh, militias, which are very various, about mm, tens or 15, 20, we, we can enumer enumerate them, is as follows. There was, uh, you know, trying to bring the Iraqi society into another form rather than Arab scores, it had been brought into a sectarian-wise division for Arabs only. And the ethnicity started the curse. So we have controversy here. You are talking about Arabs and Kurds as, as far as ethnicity is concerned, and you are talking about Sunnis and Shias as far as the Arabs Concern. So now, again, as we see in the triad or the triangular power relation on the Gulf, now we have a three, you know, not on uh, a good terms between themselves. And any two of these, when they go against the third, the third will be contained. This, this problem had been manipulated by Iran. Iran chose to support the, the, the political Shiite. Uh, 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 parties in Iraq against the Sunni insurgency, which had been again contained by Al Qaeda first and by ISIS on the second. The government has at that time a very big and great actually presence in Mosul itself. They have about two army divisions, armored and mechanized, uh, in Mosul city itself. And uh, it had been, you know, uh, uh, under attack from. Um, from ISIS people, several hundred, uh, two, three hundred they, uh, there was, against Mosul, and the Maliki government chose to pull out of Mosul, suddenly, as simple as that. He pulled his generals, and when the soldiers saw the generals, you know, flee the, the city, they flee the city and left all the technology, which was very, very modern, the American technology, uh, left it on the, on the on the ground, and the ISIS confiscated, confiscated all that and shifted it into Raqqa. And this gave the ISIS a very, very strong 
uh, footing in, in Mosul and encouraged uh, Abu Bakr Baghdadi to, you know, proclaim caliphate, Islamic caliphate. Uh, and uh, from now, they started to say, uh, to, to call their uh, power as the Islamic State. It started to go down and enclaved Baghdad and go even down to the 70 kilometers uh, line, which I talked to you about, where Jurfa Sakhar is. This is in the vicinity of Babel, of Hilla. So now the Islamic State uh, actually uh, gained control all, all over uh, northern, northwestern part of Iraq, and it goes to the east toward Diyala, which has again about 70% of Sunnis in it, so, and uh, to the vicinity of Kirkuk. There is, this question had not been seriously addressed by the government of Iraq. Who is the one, who is the responsible one for leaving uh, this territory to the Iranians first? And who is responsible to uh, uh, giving, to, to the, sorry, ISIS on one, and who is responsible for the disintegration of the, actually, the disintegration of the Iraqi army uh, to the point that Baghdad itself had been put under, had been put under actually siege for a brief period of time uh, from ISIS. Uh, till the, the, the time where the government started to clean the, the you know, vicinity of Baghdad uh, from uh, ISIS. It go down to the 70 kilometers, started to clean and uh, reclaim um, Jurfa Sakhar and coming up to the vicinity of Baghdad, which is now under the government control. Tikrit also ha was put under, uh, under uh, attack. Uh, there were about 56 attacks from the government, the 57th uh, with the support of the uh, American forces, American air forces uh, succeeded. Now the government started to, uh, after it liberated Romadi and Fallujah, started its aims to go for Mosul and starting to uh, reclaim the city. Why Mosul is so important? The same importance which I, I talked about uh, uh, Iraq is, uh, uh, pertains to Mosul. This is the governorate of Mosul. Mosul is the second governorate in Iraq. And Mosul itself, I mean Nainawa governorate, which is Mosul, and Mosul itself is the second largest city of Iraq with a population of more than two million people. The city is divided into uh, eastern and western co uh, coast, as they call it. I mean, eastern, eastern part, which is uh, east to Tigris, and the western part, which is west to Tigris. The eastern part is populated m by a mixture of Arabs and Kurds. The, 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 the uh, western part is uh, populated by Arabs, Muslims, and uh, Chaldeans. The um, plain around Mosul from the east is purely Christian, I mean Chaldean. And, um, and we can even uh, show you here, you know. <coughs> These parts are Chaldean parts of Mosul. These parts are, uh, you know, Arab, Arab uh, Sunni tribes. Here in Sinjar, Sinjar is a traversal mountain which started from a point about uh, 45 kilometers west of Mosul and goes toward the, the, the uh, Iraqi Syrian border. The mountain itself is populated by Yazidis. Yazidis is one of the oldest Iraqi, uh, you know, ethnicities which uh, which came, I mean, through the the uh, old ages and um, it inherited uh, some of the you know uh, religious uh, rituals of. It's a mixture of Christianity, Iran, and uh, 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 you know the, the the Iranian religion of. Uh, 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 Majusi, what, what is it? Yeah. Uh, Zoroastrians, yeah, sorry. And uh, so you see that Mosul now is a link. 
a link with, 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 with Turkey, which is in the north, a link to Syria, which is a, uh, to the uh, west, and link to the Iran, which is on the uh, across Erbil to the east, and link to the uh, rest of Iraq and the Arabian Gulf to the south. It, it is, uh, you know, bordering the Caucasus, so it's very near to the, uh, you know, to Russia and the uh, Caspian Sea. And um, because of this, it is very, very vital, very vital to the Iranian project, which tends to pave the way from Iran to the Eastern Mediterranean. This is the highway. It's a part of the Silk Road. This is the high, highway which is, you know, bringing Iran safely to, to, to the eastern uh, coast of the Mediterranean. Now, uh, the liberation of, of Mosul started. People were speculated, as Dr. Khalil said. Will it take too long time to liberate Mosul? Is it a brief, will it be a brief battle? This is the second question. Or it is, you know, a mixture of this. I mean, it will take time, and um, you know, uh, the decisive phases of it could be could be briefly, uh, briefly uh, uh, executed. It is a bit complicated battle because of the volume of population who are besieged within the city. You know, you have about more than one and a half million there. And um, they are suffering both from ISIS, from Daesh, and suffering from the government because they suffered already, uh, already from the government because of the sectarian motives be behind the, uh, at least the concentration forces of the, the Hajj al-Shaabi, the concentrated forces uh, which, uh, which are trying to, uh, you know, get foot footage and, and, and in Mosul to try to, uh, you know, uh, convert or, or convert people into uh, uh, sectarian wise. It will take time, actually. But after, after the, the, you know, the, the beginning of the, the, after the beginning of the, of the, of the uh, campaign, people were again in apprehension. There are, you know, you have heard Peshmerga, the Kurds are fighting on the north, east, east and northeast of the city. They were banned from entering the city by a mutual agreement with the government. And they, they promised to pull out of those, people, uh, of those territories which they gain, after they gain it. Now there is, uh, you know, Kurds are um, saying every now and then that they are not going to pull out because this is a conflicted these are conf conflicted territories between both. Now, you have the government forces, which are supposed to be uh, uh, you know, disciplined and following the, 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 you know, the uh, instruction, fighting instructions, and uh, had their own aims to try to nullify the presence of, of, of ISIS from Mosul on one hand, and on the second hand, pave the, the, the phase to uh, the uh, uh, coming uh, period of what is day after. What, what will we do in Mosul day after? And we have the uh, popular concentration, the Hajj Shabi, which is actually a Shiite power, Shiite force. They are trying to uh, mess, as they had done in Tikrit, in Fallujah, in Ramadi. And uh, actually, they are unwelcomed by the people. They, uh, when they saw that they cannot now, uh, you know, involve in the uh, battle for Mosul, they went to Tal Afar, to the west of Mosul. Tal Afar is very pivotal to open the way, uh, the highway from Iran to Syria. Uh, uh, Tal Afar is quite uh, 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 opposite Al Hasaka and Raqqa, and uh, so just the highway goes to from Tal Afar to uh, Al Baaj, and from Baaj it goes to. Uh, uh, to uh, Al-Hasaka and, and, and Syria. So here, the Kurds, the Turks, the Arabs, Iran are, you know, actually, uh, you know, involving themselves. And there is a, uh, a war of proxy taking place. As far as the Turkish involvement, I will leave it to my 
colleague to Mustafa. And what are the ramifications to the uh, uh, future administration? I will leave it to my colleague, uh, Dr. Ahmad. But now, um, just to sum up, I mean, uh, I apologize for the you know, uh, restrictions of time. To sum up, Mosul will be very critical to the future of Iraq. Either the government choose to behave as a transnational, uh, transsectarian government, as an Iraqi government, behaving with the people as the people of Iraq, not the people of another sect. So in, unless the government will behave in this, way, in this way, the consequences, the ampl amplifications of what will be coming are very drastic. I mean, if the government fail to behave in a way that guarantees the safety of every citizen in Iraq, there, the division of the country into three warring uh, 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 sections is inevitable. I mean, inevitable. It, it will become someday. But if the government, and I doubt it actually, huh, will behave in that way, um, in a way that it is you know, a national government, uh, 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 this will be, I mean, the outcome will be come. To behave as a national government, you have to cut the Iranian involvement in Iraq, the Iranian missing within the Iraqi uh, affairs. You have to forbid Iran f from, from, you know, uh, uh, going too, too far uh, to, uh, you know, decide about the future and destiny of the country. Actually, the decisions uh, concerning Iraq are taken in Tehran rather than Baghdad. So, will we wait and see a positive behaving government as a government of the Iraqis or a government which will say yes to the Wali al-Faqih, to Tehran's orders, this will be left to the future to decide upon. Thank you so much. I apologize if I, I mean, uh, hadn't, uh, uh, I mean, covered everything in this. And uh, in the QA, I will be ready to answer any of the questions. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Abdulhab. I appreciate your insightful remarks. And uh, definitely, you're uh, abiding by uh, time, considering the uh, constraints we have today, uh, trying to cover a very complicated uh, topic, but we appreciate all that information. I'd like at this time to invite uh, Mustafa Gurbuz uh, from American University and our colleague here at the center to talk about the implications of the Mosul war or battle over Mosul on Turkey, or for Turkey, please. Thank you, and thanks for the excellent presentation. Um, I'll have three brief comments on Turkey's position regarding uh, the Mosul operation. First, increasing tensions in Mosul operation likely to have long-term implications for Iraqi Kurdistan, where Turkey plays a big role. Ankara is especially annoyed by the recent, on this very Saturday, actually, this uh, weekend, this recent decision by the Iraqi parliament to incorporate Hashdash Habi, which is better known as the Shia militias, uh, in the country's national armed forces. The danger is that recent advances of Hashdash Shabi in Tel Afar region could unleash military opportunism, especially after the U.S. elections, as the parties may ratchet up to capture more land in the disputed territories and construct a new reality on the ground without fearing the Obama administration. Tel Afar is mentioned as strategically located um, between Mosul and Sinjar. It is also historically an Ottoman uh, garrison city. It's uh, mostly Sunni Turkmen uh, population uh, historically found in Turkey, its protector. Both Erdogan and local Sunni leaders repeatedly imply direct Turkish military intervention in the case the Shia militias enter the town. This, my second comment will be on uh, Mosul's proximity to Sinjar region. 
as you know, Sinjar region received uh, global attention after ISIS, uh, after uh, ISIS attacks on Yazidi population. And it was guerrilla fighters of uh, the Kurdistan Workers Party, PKK, Turkey's arch enemy, who saved Yazidis in Sinjar mountains. And since then, the PKK gradually established a strong hall in, in Sinjar region. And such developments uh, not only bothered Ankara, but also uh, Kurdistan regional government. Given Turkey's ongoing war with PKK after uh, the, um, P the end of the peace process in southeast Turkey, and also uh, the, the war uh, happening in Syria, um, PKK's affiliate, uh, YPG forces, Erdogan's long support for Barzani regime has met a broader opposition nowadays. PKK YPG forces are now allied with Kurdistan, Kurd Kurdish opposition parties in the Suleymaniye region, uh, the Goran movement, um, and especially after the economic crisis that is faced in the uh, Iraqi Kurdistan, now between Erbil uh, and Suleymaniye uh, rift, um, and the protests happening in Suleymaniye region. Facing economic downturn and ongoing war with ISIS, the KRG government shares Turkey's fear that Iran has become a dominant player in the Suleymaniye region especially, and now ready to exacerbate existing divisions within the country. Unless there is a new round of peace talks with, uh, between Turkey and PKK, Iraqi Kurdistan will remain as a ground for power competition. Current economic crisis is not helping, as I said, uh, and the danger is that ISIS could capitalize on these vulnerabilities uh, in Iraqi Kurdistan, and new sectarianism could find its way to Iraqi Kurdistan um, in, a, in a serious way, um, perhaps for the first time. And Turkey will become involved in this sectarian game um, because of the fears, as I said, um, that Iran is uh, gaining too much uh, power. And my third and final point, it's about Raqqa offensive, which is not, sep cannot be separated from the question of Mosul. It's worrisome to see increasing escalation of conflict among US allies. Turkey backed Syrian rebel forces on one hand, and Kurdish led SDF forces, uh, Syrian Democratic Forces, on the other. So far, U.S. balancing strategy has prioritized the military advances against ISIS. So basically, Washington was bending with whichever side is better positioned at a given moment to seize territory from the extremist group. Such policy, however, is leading both Ankara and the Kurdish forces to advance as quickly as possible even at the risk of sparking conflict with each other. The city al Bab is a case in point. Uh, the two forces have uh, lately uh, uh, each advanced within several miles of al Bab city, setting up a competition for a slice of a land that is perceived as strategically critical for their regional ambitions. And um, I would like to end with this note that we know that the president-elect Donald Trump has spoken positively uh, about both Erdogan and Kurdish forces, but how he plans to reach an accommodation between them remains a misery, uh, mystery. Without could serious, be a misery, uh, it could be a mystery. <laughs> uh, yeah, mis mystery could turn misery. Without a serious political, pol uh, I would like to highlight this word, political roadmap, the Syrian conflict will continue even if the Raqqa is captured because the military opportunism based on ethnic and sectarian tensions could give rise the Islamic State or any other extremist group playing on Sunni frustration in the region, an opportunity to rise again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. Last but not least, uh, Dr. Ahmad, if, uh, just a few minutes on the uh, implications for the United States, and then we will have the Q&A session. Mm -hmm. uh, 
good afternoon. It is afternoon, yes. Uh, I'm the one with my my uh, children told me to do. Use your computer, man. <laughs> <laughs> you have it in your hand. Uh, so I didn't uh, prepare any written statement. But anyway, um, yeah, it's 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 funny to uh, to talk about this and say, well, what does it mean for the United States? It means everything for the United States. Um, uh, unfortunately, the uh, uh, a lot has been said, but uh, a long time ago, but it's not being uh, being repeated anymore. Uh, what uh, former Secretary of State uh, Colin Powell said: uh, "You know, uh, you go to Iraq, it's like going to a China shop. You break it, you fix it, uh, or or you pay for it." Um, uh, unfortunately, after uh, withdrawal from uh, Iraq in 2011, uh, there hasn't necessarily been a whole lot of strategic thinking about uh, Iraq, uh, it's like, uh, it's been uh, almost like, you know, this is a situation we deal with and uh, and uh, forget about what happens after it or forget about what happens next door to it. Uh, it's like a, a piecemeal approach and this is uh, exactly what has, unfortunately, since 2000, 2003 has gotten us uh, where we are today. Uh, Mosul is not an Iraqi, uh, an Iraqi battle only. It's also a, uh, uh, a Syrian battle. It's also a, uh, uh, an American battle. Uh, and it's a battle to be won, definitely. Uh, nobody wants ISIS to, uh, to strengthen or to remain in uh, Mosul. Uh, and nobody wants ISIL to remain in northern Syria either. Um, uh, ISIL should be uh, destroyed and uh, done away with. The problem is, uh, if Mosul is not handled correctly, uh, ISIS will come back uh, in a different format, probably, uh, unfortunately, uh, more brutal and uh, more dangerous. Uh, the, uh, this is why the United States has to be on the ground, and uh, apparently, uh, strategic thinking in the White House uh, over the last uh, few years has been really based upon uh, a principle of uh, uh, we do not want any more involvement, any more engagement, direct engagement in the Middle East, <coughs> although uh, we cannot not have uh, direct engagement in the Middle East. I know this is, uh, in Washington, it's like uh, everybody is saying, well, no, we really should be out of there, and uh, nobody is calling for wars in the Middle East or anything, but. Uh, but the China shop has been entered and it has been, uh, uh, a lot of things have been broken and uh, everybody who is saying that uh, we, do, we should not be involved in nation building, uh, uh, let them think about what non-nation building might uh, create for American interests or American allies in the, uh, in the Middle East. Um, uh, Mosul is uh, a microcosm, like I said, of a whole bunch of uh, fights and uh, uh, it must be won. The problem is, what do you do after it? The problem is the United, uh, the um, um, uh, the present Iraqi formation, political formation, whether it is a central government, whether it is a, uh, a federal, the federal system itself failing, whether it is the uh, political uh, forces within the country uh, that are not necessarily working for. Uh, an overall Iraqi picture, they're working for individual uh, political parties kind of uh, picture. Uh, whether it is uh, Shia or Sunni or uh, whether it is uh, Iranian supported or not Iranian supported, everybody is working for immediate gains and partisan gains instead of uh, uh, national uh, gains. And uh, this is where the United States was hoped, hoped to be, to enter into uh, an Iraqi situation where it can, it may help uh, uh, produce a better political um, um, uh, outcome, but uh, this is where we are. Uh, Mosul is also, uh, it's, it, it actually is, uh, you know, my piece in your, in your packet says, portends the future of Iraq. If, if you mess up Mosul, the after battle, the battle, uh, the Mosul after the battle, if you mess it up, uh, Iraq is no longer coming back. Uh, uh, the old Iraq, that is. Uh, there is a lot. There are a lot of scenarios that could be uh, concocted. A lot of scenarios that could be thought of. And uh, anyone who who has, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, military force on the ground is the one who is the who might be able to decide what happens with it. Uh, the issue of uh, whether it is uh, the, uh, the popular mobilization units uh, who are participating in the battle in the north, uh, whether it is the Iraqi central government forces, 
the issue is uh, um, what do uh, uh, they do afterwards. Uh, a Mosul uh, needs uh, to be reconstructed. Uh, Mosul needs to be rehabilitated. Uh, otherwise, ISIS will come back. Uh, because this is what happened after 2003. The areas that were neglected by the central government after 2006, uh, when uh, Nur al-Maliki came to power in, uh, in Baghdad, uh, those, those, those uh, governorates, those places, uh, became very hospitable to extremist thinking, uh, unfortunately. And nobody did anything about it. Uh, although there was an opportunity in 2010 to appoint a different uh, uh, prime minister, but uh, I guess uh, the United States was uh, really uh, urgently working on some sort of a rapprochement with uh, the central government, but also a rapprochement with the government of, uh, of Iran to try to uh, accommodate uh, certain interests, uh, Iranian interests, and this is what, what really uh, led us here. Uh, Mosul was not abandoned by uh, by nationalist forces in Iraq. It was abandoned by 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 forces that didn't know what to do. Uh, they uh, uh, what 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 they were working for was sectarian interests, and uh, unfortunately, uh, today we're dealing with the repercussions of that. And uh, the the uh, the other unfortunate fact is we don't really know what comes after 2000 after January 20th, 2017. What we hear now is that okay, well you know. Let them be. Uh, let them deal with it themselves. Uh, we don't uh, really have much to uh, to do about it. I, I don't know if we really uh, uh, should be saying that uh, because uh, the uh, the situation is very very dire as far as not only American. And we're not only talking about American interests, but if uh, the United States does not does not work uh, to try to ameliorate the situation after 2017, uh, we're in for a very big shock. Uh, the Arab state system is in, basically in the, in the Levant, that is, uh, is in free fall. Uh, uh, yesterday, or uh, was it Saturday, I think, the Iraqi uh, parliament uh, approved uh, the uh, formation and the institutionalization of the popular mobilization units. And uh, they're not necessarily within the Iraqi army because the, the, the parliament itself will have to really vet and uh, you know, supervise the, uh, the appointment of their leaders, which means they are a separate institution. They're not part of the army, really. And that really reminds us of the, uh, of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards you know, uh, uh, Corps, which is another force, military force, besides the, uh, the Iranian uh, regular armed forces. Um, uh, remember also that uh, also yesterday, the uh, the Iranian supported Houthi rebels in Yemen formed their own government uh, in Sana'a. So they decided that they want to go for uh, for a government. In other words, uh, and in Lebanon we have uh, Hezbollah, and Hezbollah is a separate force outside of the Lebanese army, and it decides what really Lebanese foreign policy is. And uh, we mustn't forget that there are popular forces that are helping the Syrian uh, armed forces in the uh, current uh, civil war there. So we have two separate power structures that are being built in four very, very essential Arab states. And uh, I mean, uh, three very essential Arab states, Iraq, uh, uh, well, no, actually, it is four, uh, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Yemen. And if we have separate structures, institutional military structures, we are talking about either the capture of the current state and its institutions, or the establishment of a different state. In other words, and, and uh, if the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guards Corps is any example, these people will be exactly what the, uh, what the uh, IRGC uh, has been in, uh, in, uh, in Iran. So uh, uh, the United States is in this. It doesn't matter what we say in the State Department or the, or, the, or the White House or anywhere. The United States is losing the Middle East. And at least it's losing the, the, uh, the Levant. And if we are going to be continuing with, with that kind of, uh, of foreign policy towards the Middle East, it's tough. It's going to be really, really hard. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. On this positive <laughs> note, uh, <laughs> uh, we would like to spend the balance of our time today in the art of conversation. So it's your turn. Please uh, just raise your hand. I will acknowledge you, identify yourself, very brief questions, address it specifically uh, to one of the, either to the speaker or to the two commentators. You are already mic'd. You don't need to wait for a mic. Uh, the table has mics, in it, so everybody should be <laughs> <You're bugged laughs> able to hear uh, everything that's taking place in the room. Only in the room, by the way. Okay. Uh, uh, this question, my name is Muhammad Awais. Uh, I don't know politically where I am. Uh, I'm just, it's okay. It's, uh, I'm just we welcome refugees. <laughs> well, I, well, thank you for saying I'm a refugee from Palestine, but uh, my question is for Dr. Al-Kassab. You spoke about uh, the, the triad, the two triangles, yes. uh, but you stayed within whatever is happening only uh, from the Iranians, the Turks, uh, the Kurds, uh, whatever is happening in Iraq, and you did not expand because the extension of the Iraqi Sunnis, uh, your triangle to the south, southwest, should have been uh, much bigger than that because I think from my perspective, what is happening now, it's going, the, the genie is out of the bottle. It is Sunni Shia war. Uh, whether we like it or not, whether we admit it or not. Uh, and what, what do you think uh, the future is going to be, not for Iraq, for me, Iraq, Syria, uh, Lebanon, Yemen, I think they are almost lost uh, causes and cases. What will be the future of the rest of the, uh, the, the Middle East uh, Arab countries, uh, especially the GCC, which you mentioned in your, in your triangle. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, yeah. Actually, I, when I talked about the uh, triangle of power, I said that this triangle of power worked positively until the eve of uh, uh, invasion, I mean, up to the two or three was working, I mean, Iraq, in, in another word, very clear word, Iraq continued after the Kuwait affair to contain the Iranian expansion, uh, expansionism. And because of this, and because of there is no real Iranian intrusion or, uh, within Iraq, which had been kept, actually, there was a, there was a, mm, you know, uh, a move toward Iraq on, uh, on the eve of Kuwait, uh, after, after the Kuwait affair, uh, 1991, and had been curbed by the government. Because of that, the, the, the Iraqi society uh, didn't lose its cohesion, at least the Arabs in, in the Iraq. I mean, at least the Arabs were, were continue to feel, identify themselves as Arab, rather than Sunnis and Shiites. What, what supported this uh, formula is, you have, um, you know, millions of, of Arabs, uh, of, of, of uh, Sunnis and Shias are with, with mixed marriages. With, with they are, you know, uh, belong to the same tribe. So the tribal uh, forces also working. And um, because of this, until the invasion, the cohe cohesion of the Iraqi society still continued. Now, after two or three, what happened? What happened after two, two or three? is the deep Iranian involvement within the Iraqi affairs and the deep Iranian support for the various Shiite parties which, which grab the power and create their own militias, which were, which were you know, the militias, hundreds, uh, tens, tens of militias are in Iraq. They were supported by the Iranians. And the Iranians were dealing with them you know, in a parallel way. I mean, they, they, they are dealing with, for example, Hizb al uh, on the same time that they are uh, dealing with Hakim faction. On the same time, they were uh, uh, dealing with Fadila faction. And in a parallel way, uh, and with Maliki. Uh, so you see the Iranians today supporting Maliki on, uh, over the other. The other day, they choose the other one. So they maintain their power through the friction which had been created between uh, you know, various uh, Shiite factions in Iraq, and we can prove that, I mean, bring examples of that. Now, as I told you, that the outcome of, of, of Mosul uh, 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 battle will decide the future not only of Iraq, because as my, my first hypothesis was, Iraq is very critical to the region, to the region at any time, whether it was, you know, uh, strong 
or it was weak as it is today. When it is strong, so it maintained the balance within the various powers, and uh, it started to support, actually, the um, Arab identity of the Levant, of the Crescent, I mean, the, the, the uh, uh, vital Crescent, that the Levant and Iraq, plus the Gulf region and the Arabian Peninsula. At that time, you know, things were uh, positive because Iraq was strong. And when uh, the sin of Saddam Hussein had been taking place in so 1990, uh, 1990 when he invaded Kuwait, this, uh, you know, link between the uh, various powers within the uh, uh, vital Christians on, on one hand and the Arabian Peninsula, GCC, on the other hand, had been broken. Now, things became deteriorated because even the powers of those people who claim that they are supporting, for example, supporting the GCC and the Arab uh, cause, had choose to go and step by, by, by Bashar al-Assad. And you have CC, CC. Uh, uh, you know, actually, there, there, there were you know rumors that there are even there are uh, Egyptian forces uh, forces are fighting with with Bashar al-Assad. So this is a very drastic change uh, as far as the power relation between the various Arab states are there. Uh, as I told you, the outcome of the uh, of the Mosul uh, uh, battle will be you know um, suspected of being positive toward the stability of the region. Because unless, uh, myself and uh, my colleague Ahmad also brought up, unless the government behave as, the, as an Iraqi uh, government and maintain the cohesiveness of the Iraqi society, bring that the people as a citizens, one citizen, one vote, and uh, equals the other, unless this had been done or will be done, I mean, um, and I doubt it, as I told you, though, because to do that, you have to curb the Iranian, uh, uh, you know, uh, intrusion within Iraq. And this, this needs... Uh, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, do you have a question? Oh, yeah. Sure. Thank you very much. Ambassador of Arab League, thank you, Dr. Kassab and Ahmad and Mustafa for your presentation. I have a question to Dr. Kassab. Yesterday, we had a meeting at the State Department with, uh, with uh, Mr. Mikhail, uh, Mikhail. He's a um, U.S. representative to uh, Syria, I think, and Iraq. And he talked about the duration of Mosul battle. He said, battle. He said it's going to take a long, long time. And today, also we said that. But in the morning, I saw the news in the um, uh, channel. Uh, President Haider Abadi said, well, no, the battle is going to finish before the end of this year. So <coughs> what do you think about this? What is your thought about that? And I have a question about the Hajj um, al-Shia, Hajj al-Shaabi when they are uh, now uh, part of the um, uh, Iraqi government, don't you think they will have the upper hand to start the cleansing, the ethnic cleansing in, in, in that area? Okay. Is one month enough? <laughs> uh, actually, one month is not enough, actually. Um, Abadi, Abadi, Abadi used to, see, uh, to tell us uh, uh, things which prove at, afterward that they are not true. Abadi is, uh, you know, actually, at, at least he is not a military man. Uh, you know, uh, his consultants are not, uh, I mean, giving him what, whatever he wants to, to hear. Um, but on the other hand, I, I'm quite sure that ISIS will, at, at, at a point, will, will, will choose to, uh, you know, disengage, as it had happened in, in Fallujah, in Ramadi, in, in, in Tikrit, in Maghdadiyah. It, it, there is a point where uh, ISIS will choose um, suddenly to this, this uh, uh, engage and um, try to leave, to have a passage to, to leave. Uh, when this will uh, happen, uh, I don't think that Abadi is, uh, was right, that within uh, 20, 25 days. But there, the, you, know, you have, again, one very complicated issue now. All the bridges which link eastern and western part of Mosul had been destroyed. Mm -hmm. So the maintenance of cooperation, which is one of the main uh, 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 military uh, doctrine factors, will be lost. How will you maintain uh, cooperation between the forces which are on the uh, western bank of Tigris and those uh, who are on the eastern part of the uh, eastern bank of Tigris? This is one. Second, you have the million plus population in Mosul, how they will be dealt with? Uh, and this will uh, answer your second question. 
if they will will be handled by al hajj al-shaabi by the popular concentration that means uh, sectarian cleansing this had been this had already happened in sharqat uh, which is a city which had been regained uh, only only two weeks earlier or 10 days earlier they 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 gathered all the population the the, the male population took them into concentration and starting and there are a pretense of you know, trying to see who, who is uh, pro Daesh, pro ISIS, who is not. So this, if, uh, uh, think about it, that if one and a half million people will be uh, treated uh, in such a way. Um, just to sum up, uh, Abadi is very, you know, uh, uh, looking positively that he will finish the thing within one month. I think it will take a little, not a little, but a good deal of uh, of time to uh, stabilize things in Mosul and Arab. He's not a dreamer. He's a dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, our time is up, unfortunately. Uh, if you care to stay, hang around, our speakers would uh, afterwards and chat a little bit more. Be free to do so. A word of uh, thanks to all of you for being here today. Uh, we welcome you again. Come back and visit with us in future events. Special thanks to uh, Dr. Al-Bassab for his presentation, to my two colleagues who commented uh, on the presentation, and uh, special thanks to the staff who put this event uh, together. Thank you very much. Have a good day.